Hello guys, my name is Logert, and today I will be explaining the nuances of food production in Dwarf Fortress. Now, food production is very important. Obviously, just like, you know, regular human beings, if you don't have enough food, uh, your dwarves will develop a pretty bad habit of just dying on you and starving to death. And that can, that's actually a cause of death for a lot of fortresses, because new players, either they don't know how to make enough food, or they don't get enough food, or... It's just, in general, a really big problem. So today I'll be going over the various ways that you can obtain food in Dwarf Fortress to make sure that your fortresses can actually, you know, survive a given amount of time and actually create enough food to create a surplus. And when your fortress gets bigger, it can continue to expand and get more food. So let's get right into these different methods. First, let's talk about farming. Now, farming is the most complex way to get food, but it's also the most effective. And when you have a large fortress, it's the best method to use because you'll actually produce enough food to, you know, keep up with the amount of dwarves that you have. However, to start farming, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need seeds. Um, the seeds that I would recommend is plump helmet spawn. And how to get plump helmet spawn? Uh, when you embark with the preparations. Uh, make sure you get lots of them. You want lots and lots of plump helmet spawns. That's found under the items tab while you're preparing for your journey. So make sure to bring lots of plump helmet spawn. And when I when I mean a lot of plump helmet spawn, I mean I would bring like a hundred plump helmet spawn, and that will allow you to. It's basically yeah, bringing seeds for you to plant later in your fortress. So that's really all you need when you embark. All you need is an area with dirt and some plump helmet spawns. Okay, so here we are in game, and this is just kind of a sample fortress that I made. Um, it's not the same as we were doing in the last tutorial, but it's just just an example. Um, we're looking at right now the we're looking at the requirements that it takes to actually farm something. So if we take a look and we press the K button, we can see that right here it is a silty clay cavern floor, and that means that we can plant plants on there because we're looking for either dirt or clay or lo silty clay like. All that works. That all, you know, you know what I'm talking about, dirt. But if we come up here and we see this white stuff, this is chalk. And you can't actually, uh, you can't farm on chalk. You have to have dirt. So if you're going to try and farm, you need to dig out a nice little area full of uh, dirt, silty clay, all that's the same. And then to actually put down a farm plot, we're going to press B and then we're going to press P. And that brings up farm plot and again this brings up the x and you can see the u m k h and that if you press u m or k h right now i'm pressing k that makes the plot wider and you can see these x's and i'm going to press u here and that makes the plot bigger that makes it take up an area and once you've figured out a good area a good sized location for your farm plot then you press enter so my farm plot is going to be the inside of that room because that's where i want to farm and in order to farm, we need to have dwarves that have the grower skill. So if you're not sure if your dwarves have the grower skill, you need to press U. And if you came with one, usually they'll be called farmers or planters. But just in case, just in case you want to check, press Z while selecting one of them. And then press P and then L. And this opens up a new menu, a menu where you can actually change what a dwarf's jobs are. And if we go to farming slash related, we want to make sure that farming fields is on. And this dwarf is also a brewer. But we want to make sure that farming fields is on. Because that means that he, his one of his jobs is to go and plant seeds. That's, that's the skill for it. We can actually make any dwarf we want into a grower. For example, if we wanted the uh, woodcutter to become a, a grower, we'd press Z and then PL and then go down to farming related and right now you can see that he isn't a grower but we're gonna make him a grower right now that way we have three people who can plant seeds and then we're gonna press space and start up the world and we'll see that a farmer is gonna go construct the farm plot because they have to be made before they can be used so he just it's gonna take a second for him to build that and then we'll be able to start farming on it and you don't need to worry so much about water. Water is not important in Dwarf Fortress farming. It used to be, 
but it got removed which makes farming so much easier and so you can see the farm plot is getting built it's not flashing anymore you can actually it's starting to fill in a little bit and as soon as he's finished we're gonna press wait for him to be finished this can take a little bit depending on the size of the farm plot and he's done so we're gonna press Q we press Q and you can see the little icon moving around and it's selecting this whole farm field which means that we're we're gonna change what we're planting in this farm field we want to plant plump helmets because that's what we brought in seeds so if you look down here if you follow my mouse and you come down here you can see the a the b the c and the d like right there that's the four seasons there's four seasons in dwarf fortress and you can actually change what seeds you want to be planted during each season like for example let's press a to make sure we're on spring we can grow dimple cups plump helmets quarry bushes and sweet pods during spring but if we press B and go to summer, we can plant cave wheat, dimple cups, pigtails, plump helmets, quarry bushes, and sweet pods. Autumn, it's one less thing, and then winter is only two things. So there's only certain things you can plant during certain seasons. But we're going to plant plump helmets by, we're going to select plump helmets when we press A, and press enter on the plump helmets, which makes them light up. We're going to press B, and then we're going to select plump helmets. We're going to press C, then we're going to select plump helmets. Then we're going to press D and pre select plump helmets. This is really important because if you don't do this step and you only do it for spring, your dwarves will stop planting after spring. They'll assume that you don't want these fields being used during the other seasons, which obviously you do. You want food to be planted all year round. So now we've given the dwarves the command to uh, plant plump helmets all year round, just constantly plant them here. So let's press escape and press U. And we'll see that these three dwarves, including the woodcutter that we just changed his job, are going to go start planting seeds. And what's up? What's over here? A bunch of giant sparrows, whatever. You can see they're coming in here, and they're going to plant the seeds. And the dwarves will keep on doing that. I think plump helmets take about five minutes to grow. So we will not actually see the fruits of their labor. But for now, if someone's just a grower, as long as you have seeds, he'll just keep running out to the wagon grabbing more seeds coming back in planting more and that's growing food you can as long as you set plump helmets all year round you can grow them all year round that way you constantly have a food supply coming in so we can look at z we only have 20 meat 20 fish 20 plant but as more plump helmets come in and we have a lot of seeds but as more plump helmets come in our plant totals will go through the roof like we'll get a ton of uh plump helmet food so that's how that's the basics of farming that's farming for sustenance make sure just to kind of recap the steps make sure that you have a silty clay cavern floor um, it needs to be indoors you can't plant for example let's um, you can put a farm plot outside however plump helmets need to grow inside there are plants that you can grow outside but plump helmets aren't one of them and i would definitely recommend if you're a new player to grow plump helmets because they are a very consistent very stable food source so you need dirt you need it inside and you need planter dwarves um, the growers any dwarf can harvest plants but only growers can plant them so make sure you have enough of them uh, you always want to have i would recommend two but as your fortress grows make more of your uh more of your dwarves uh, growers that way your farms are more efficiently taken care of and managed because you don't want your plump helmets to be just sitting on the ground and possibly decay or go away because then you lose everything so that's the very basics of farming right there the next food gathering method that we're going to talk about is plant gathering slash herbalism so this is a bit of a less consistent less i guess efficient way to gather food but when you're in a smaller fortress you can actually make it work because you don't have that many dwarves eating so the first thing we're going to need to do is go to one of our dwarves and we're going to press that z c p l as we did before but this time we're going to go to i believe it's still farming fishing related and we're going to go down to plant gathering and plant gathering is the skill for actually collecting plants so we're gonna go we're gonna go to a different Z level we're gonna go down here and we're gonna press D and then we're gonna press P which is gather plants and we're gonna draw a nice little rectangle right over this whole area right here 
and as you can see, a bunch of different things light up. Much like if we were to press DT to chop down trees, the trees would light up. But in this case, these are little like bushes, I guess, that this plant gathering dwarf will go and collect from. This is food that your dwarves can eat. So he's gonna go up to that one right there and collect it. And then he'll go to another one and then collect that one. Obviously, if he's more skilled, he'll do it faster. This one, he's kind of taking forever to do it. So what did he drop? Did he drop anything? Um, but herbalism, sometimes, depending on the plant, uh, you need to build a, what's it called? Um, I think it's a farmer's workshop. You, by, you'll do this by pressing B, then W, and then going down to the farmer's workshop, which is W. So you press B, W, W. And this is a three by three workshop that processes plants. So we're gonna make it out of chalk right here. And that's gonna be built by a plant processor or workshop farming, whatever. Um, but yeah, that that's the uh, most of the food that you gather will be it's just edible on the spot like right now you can see I don't think it's changing anything because we can't broker we can't um, we don't have a, a record keeper that's what I'm thinking of a record keeper to actually you know keep track of how much food we have but most of the food that he's gathering down here is is good enough just to eat just by itself so that's ba the, that's the basics of herbalism I mean you're gonna want more than one dwarf doing it because obviously if he's unskilled he's pretty slow and he doesn't get as many like food units per uh, area and you also have to take into account the fact that the food has to grow back too so once you've cleared an area that area will take a while before it grows back usually about a year so if you have a large fortress this isn't a food gathering thing that you really can rely on but if you still have a small fortress, around 20 to 30 dwarves, as long as you have three or four herbalists, you can probably make it by more or less. So it's, it's a method that's out there. This also allows you to get seeds, which allows you to farm outdoor plants and can be pretty useful. So it's good to have one, but only early on should this be your primary food source. But in a pinch, I guess if your dwarves are starving, it's better than nothing. So next, we're going to talk about fishing. Fishing is... One of those food sources that are food gathering methods that I would rate it between herbalism and farming to being pretty good. So it's consistent enough to keep a fortress of moderate size alive as long as you have enough people. So the first thing you have to do in order to fish is press U and then have a dwarf that has the fisherman skill, which we're going to make this mason right here have the fisherman skill. So we press Z, C, P, L. And we're gonna go to the fishing slash related and we're gonna turn on fishing for him and let's do this for one more person as well so we got the mason let's also get the woodcutter he's gonna do CPL go up to fishing fishing so now we got two fisher dwarves and they should go off and go fish here quick but in order to actually be successful at fishing first of all you need to have like a you need to have a water source you need to have a creek or a stream or a river as you can see down here we have one basically any any source of water it can even be like a lake it can be they can fish basically at anything and it, it's kind of tacky like when dwarves will try and fish out of like three blocks of water it looks funny but it can be done so the next thing you need for fishing obviously you need the fish or dwarves and then you need to process the fish because dwarves can't eat raw fish so we're gonna take this dwarf right here and we're going to press Z, C, P, L and we're gonna go down to fishing slash related and then we're gonna do fish cleaning, fish di you don't need fish dissection, but whatever. We're gonna select fish cleaning. Make sure you have this, otherwise your fish will go to waste. Um, then you're, we're gonna press B, W and then the fishery, which is H. Oh crap, we are going to need some trees. I totally forgot to chop down some trees for this tutorial. Let's just chop down some trees quick. Um, woodcutter. Oh crap, our woodcutter's fishing. <laughs> oh, this is a fail. Alright. Okay, let me just assign you. Chop down trees. Quick. Okay, good. He's, he's going to go fell trees. Okay, good. We need to build a fishery. Sorry about that. We need to build a fishery because that processes fish. So, 
the dwarves can actually eat them. It makes the fish edible, obviously. So we're going to go build that right now. That's going to be built. I can't remember who we made the, uh, oh, did we make the mason or the expedition leader? The, okay, you're no longer a plant gatherer. You are instead a fish cleaner. So stop gathering plants and go make that thing. So as soon as you make the fishery, the dwarves will return with their fish and your fish cleaner will automatically cut them up, uh, preserve them somehow. I don't know how exactly they do it, but basically make food out of these, uh, out of the fish they return. And as long as your water source is kind of nearby and you have two or three fisher dwarves, you can actually make quite a large amount of food out of this, uh, out of this fishery. So the fishery automatically has the task, prepare a raw fish, but you'll often have to retell it to do these certain tasks. So every time you want the fishery to prepare a fish, press A and then press P. And that will automatically prepare any raw fish that are sitting in your fortress. If you have them sitting for too long, as you can see, he's actually going up there right now and preparing the fish. So that's gonna become a meal right there. And that will feed some of the dwarves. So fishing actually early on is a really, really good way of getting food. Fishing and farming should just those two things by themselves should be enough to keep your uh keep your fortress alive and we just ran out of fish there was only one fish back but you you get the point as fishermen will automatically go out and fish come back and return the fish they'll get cleaned and that'll go into your food food stockpiles so that's fishing it's pretty simple the only things that you really have to worry about make sure you have a fishery because if you don't your fish will just sit there in barrels and rot and then you'll be like why don't I have any food and then you'll die so that's always awkward don't have that happen to you okay that that's that's the basics of fishing the last method of food gathering that we're gonna talk about is hunting and the reason I'm telling this one last is because it's the most dangerous but also can be the most it can be pretty effective as well hunting is exactly what you think it is. It's having a dwarf go out and hunt wild animals and bringing back their carcasses and then, you know, making food out of it. So this one also has a bit to it. So first of all, if you're gonna try and do hunting, it's best that you plan ahead while you're embarking and bring a crossbow and a lot of bolts for your, one of your whatever hunting dwarves. And it's also advisable that you increase the crossbow skill and all the hunting skills beforehand because if you don't do that then hunting probably won't turn out very well for you just if you start up a game and be like oh I want to make a hunting dwarf but for the purpose of this I'll show you how to do it so we're gonna make one of these dwarves a hunting dwarf and we're gonna make this miner right here a hunting dwarf so we're gonna press Z CPL and we're gonna go to hunting slash related and just select the skill hunting and that's it he's now a hunter and he will now go out and hunt wildlife and fight them. Is and he needs to have a weapon. It's better if you have a ranged weapon. So you really need to bring a weapon with you. That's the best way to do it. I don't think he'll actually go out hunting because I don't have any weapons. But if he did, if he did have a weapon, he would go out and start hunting animals. And he'd hunt the animals on the map. And right now on the map there are giant sparrows. But if there were more dangerous animals, I don't advise hunting. Like. You don't want your dwarf hunting an elephant because the elephant will kill you. As soon as you do start hunting, it's a, you need to build by pressing B, W, and then there's a butcher, butcher shop. It's a U, B, W, U, and build a butcher shop. Butcher shop is where your hunter will automatically go out and kill things and then return them. And then as long as you have a butcher, which we're going to make right now, Z, C, P, L, we're gonna go down to hunting slash related, small animal, not small animal dissection. I think it's under cooking actually. Er, farming? There should be butcher. Butchery, right there. Wow, I can't, I can't even read. You wanna make sure you have a butcher as well. You don't want it to be the same person as your hunter. So make sure you have a butcher and make sure you have a butcher shop and then make a dwarf that has the hunting skill. Give him a ranged weapon preferably and he'll go out and kill things and return them and then your butcher will slice them into pieces and give you like 15 pieces of meat so it's an effective way of doing you know of gathering food it's just 
It can also be dangerous because the things you might hunt can also fight back. And that's always awkward when your hunter gets killed. So that's all the various methods of food gathering. So thank you for watching this video. I hope that it helped you to gather more food, to survive, to keep your fortresses alive a little longer. If you have any suggestions for topics on future videos, please remember to leave them in the comments down below. And I hope to see you in my future videos. Thank you for watching, guys. You all are awesome. Have a nice night.